Let's begin today's story on the invisible hand. Anakin and Obi-Wan have just arrived to rescue the Chancellor from the Separatists when they are cornered by Count Dooku. We all know how this duel goes. Dooku uses the force to knock Obi-Wan unconscious before continuing to fight Anakin, taunting him with the dark side. In the original timeline, Anakin severs Dooku's hands before defeating him. But in today's story, we are going to take this another route. Let's say that Obi-Wan woke up earlier than he did in Revenge of the Sith. He was dazed and didn't really understand where he was. He could hear the faint noises of lightsabers clashing and the external gunfire outside the ship. As Obi-Wan struggled to gain his composure, he heard the sound of a lightsaber slashing through skin. He knew what had just happened. Either Anakin or Count Dooku had been defeated. He needed to find out which one. Obi-Wan uses the force to push the heavy railing off his legs, allowing him to maneuver himself to freedom. But as he does this, he hears Chancellor Palpatine tell Anakin to do it and finish off Count Dooku, despite the Chosen One's protests. This confirmed for Kenobi that Anakin had won, but why would the Chancellor, a mere political figure, be calling for the murder of an unarmed man? Something wasn't right, killing an unarmed man was not the way of the Republic and its leader should know that. Obi-Wan gets to his feet and stares directly at Anakin and Dooku, who had two sabers pressed up against his throat. As Palpatine calls for Anakin to do it, Obi-Wan screams at Anakin, telling him to stop. Anakin turns directly to Obi-Wan. His master tells him that it's not the Jedi way, Dooku must live. If they arrest him, he can be questioned for knowledge on the Separatists and Sith. Killing him is the wrong decision. Palpatine couldn't debate this opinion from Obi-Wan. If he told Anakin to continue and kill him, then his true intentions would be revealed. Dooku was staring at Palpatine, his face stone white. His expression demonstrated betrayal. A sudden realization dawns upon Obi-Wan. He thinks back to Geonosis when Dooku told him that the Sith Lord had control over the Senate. Could that be Palpatine? He knew how suspicious of him the council was, but Obi-Wan never gave those allegations much thought. But now, the idea couldn't leave his head. He didn't say anything as he couldn't be sure. The Jedi arrest Dooku and rescue Chancellor Palpatine, evading General Grievous and returning to the surface of Coruscant. Today was a victory for the Republic as the Separatists entered a full-scale retreat. The Chancellor was back on Coruscant safely, but his capture was only a facade to allow Anakin to kill Dooku. But now the Sith Lord became very nervous. This wasn't part of his plan. He knew the dangers of Dooku talking. If he did, then his identity would be revealed and his entire operation could be exposed. Palpatine went to his office to recite the 150 contingency orders. He knew that the time was nearing when he would have to use them. As for Dooku, he would be taken straight to the council chambers for a full interrogation by the Jedi. Everyone on the council was there, including Anakin, who at this point hadn't been elected, but was next in line. As Dooku entered the circular room, he examined it. He remembered back to when he was offered a seat on this council, but turned it down before leaving the order. He hadn't been back here since that point, almost 13 years earlier. So much had changed since then. Now, he was at risk of being put in prison for the rest of his life. Yoda begins the conversation, explaining to Dooku that if he cooperates now, the Jedi can put in a strong word to get his sentence reduced. He may be out much sooner than he expected. Dooku was stoic. He had already come to terms with his situation. There was no escaping this. Kiari Mundi diverted from their original interrogation plans, asking Dooku why he would turn to the dark side. He was once a well-respected Jedi Knight. Kiadi was disgusted. His old friend had fallen so far. But Dooku responded that it is the Jedi who have changed, not him. They once stood for something, honor, protection. Now, they are mere political ideologists and soldiers. Windu asked Dooku about the Separatist operations and upcoming plans. If the Jedi can discover their next targets, they can prioritize different sectors in the galaxy and save lives. But obviously, Dooku just refused. Windu continued, asking who the Sith Lord is. Dooku is arguably the only person in the galaxy to know the true identity of Sidious. No one on the council, except Yoda at this point, had ever even laid eyes on Sidious. But when Dooku didn't say anything, 
Mace explains that they know he told Kenobi he was in control of the Republic on Geonosis. So which senator is he influencing? Obi-Wan's heart began to beat. He knew his inclination on the invisible hand could be correct. He was about 80% sure, and Dooku's reaction to him asking this will expose the truth. Dooku pauses after Windu's comment, but then Obi-Wan takes center stage. He says that Sidious isn't influencing someone high in the Senate. He is the man in control of the Senate. Kenobi clarifies and says that Chancellor Palpatine is the Sith Lord. The rest of the council gasp in confusion, but it makes sense. But it was Dooku's reaction that sold it all. His face was shook. He tried to speak, but his voice broke. He had zero clue how Kenobi could know the truth. Yoda and Windu ask Obi-Wan how he knew, and he said he put the pieces together on the invisible hand. But he was curious as to why Dooku was still protecting him. He ordered his death right in front of him, telling Anakin to kill him. Dooku said that he was wrong. It must have been part of Sidious's plan. But Kenobi debated that thought, saying that if he hadn't interjected, then he would be dead right now. Anakin supported this claim, saying he was considering killing the Count. Everything in Dooku's world flipped upside down, and the entire council sensed it. As Dooku stood there in shock, he comes to realize that he has only ever been a pawn in Palpatine's game, and when he had enough of him, he was going to be cast aside. He remembered Yaddle and her death. He was coerced into killing her. Dooku submitted to the Jedi Council, telling them that they are correct. He was ashamed and furious. Windu asked Dooku once again to tell them what Palpatine is planning. Dooku tells the council everything, how Palpatine has been playing both sides of the war and is the most powerful being in the galaxy. He discusses the upcoming operations for the Separatists, like the invasion of Kashyyyk and Utapau, all to get the council off Coruscant. But the largest piece of information he exposed was the plans for the Death Star, a planet-destroying weapon that would allow Sidious to instill so much fear in the galaxy that they are forced to bend the knee. The council were shook and knew that they had to act as quickly as possible if they were to save the Republic from tyranny. They go straight to the Galactic Senate building. The Jedi interrupt the session, moving their pod into the center of the arena with Dooku inside. Senators around the chamber began calling for his imprisonment and execution. He was far from liked. Palpatine demanded to know what the reason for this intrusion was. Mace Windu did the speaking. He explained to the Senate that they have learned a terrible truth. Chancellor Palpatine is the Sith Lord, in control of the Separatists and the Clone Wars. Senators all across the arena moved their pods into the center, saying that this was an outrage. There was no chance that he was in control of the Clone Wars. Palpatine had been Chancellor for 10 years, far longer than the ordinary term allowed. It is safe to say that the Republic loved Palpatine and hailed him as a hero. One senator mentioned how they wouldn't believe a word of Count Dooku. He is probably just lying to force the Republic into a civil war. But then Dooku spoke for the first time, staring directly into the eyes of Darth Sidious. He explained that many years ago, he was approached by Sidious, and it wasn't until he gained his trust that he revealed his true identity as Sheev Palpatine. As he spoke, Palpatine attempted to interrupt and explain that he was lying and that they shouldn't listen to him, but Yoda silenced him, wanting to hear what he had to say. Dooku continued, explaining even more things that proved Palpatine was the Sith Lord. At this point, the Chancellor was very upset and became extremely worried. He began screaming for order and the arrest of Dooku. This allegation was treacherous. But Dooku supported his claims with evidence. He presented chat logs, bank records, clear communication with Kamino, and its link to Order 66. This proof confirmed it to all of the senators that Palpatine was the Sith Lord. It was over, Sidious's cover exposed, and the truth revealed. Senators began yelling at Sidious, not showing any mercy in their comments. He was being scolded by the entire arena. Mace Windu explained that they should vote to execute Order 65, a contingency order that declares the Supreme Chancellor unfit for duty and thus he will be arrested or executed. The senators nod in agreement. Palpatine was absolutely furious. How could have he let this happen? How did he let the Jedi get through to Dooku and force him to reveal his secrets? 
Traitor, he scoffed under his breath. But Palpatine knew he was about to get removed from the Senate. He couldn't allow this to happen. If Order 65 was ordered, then he wouldn't have access to the contingency orders of the clone troopers. He had to act now. Palpatine had a secret explosive device placed in the Senate building in case of an emergency. As the Senators decide their vote, an extremely large and powerful explosion hits the corner of the arena, killing over a dozen congressmen immediately. Everyone in the arena looked over in terror. This had never happened before. As everyone was distracted and disorientated, Palpatine used his moment to escape, leaping from his pod and running towards the exit. Jedi see him attempting to escape and follow. Amidst the chaos that had erupted in the Senate building, Sidious pulls out his comlink and executes two contingency orders. He orders the clones to execute Order 66 to purge the Jedi Order and Order 47 to kill every senator in the galaxy. This would cause enough chaos and disruption to allow him to escape. He had to kill every senator in the arena as he couldn't afford to have any of them reveal the truth of his identity. As this order was given, thousands of clones pour into the building and begin to fire at everyone in sight. The senators were defenseless and would succumb to the wrath of the clones in mere moments. The Jedi Council moves into a defensive position, attempting to defend against the onslaught. Plo Koon sends an emergency call to the Jedi Temple to come straight to the Senate building and defend the Senators. Chaos was reigning everywhere as the bodies of clones, Jedi and Senators alike were all throughout the building. Senators huddled together in their pods, praying for their survival. Palpatine's escape continues, but as he rushes to leave the building, he is followed by Anakin, Obi-Wan, Mace Windu and Yoda, who are killing clones along the way. The Sith was getting away. Skywalker was the first to stop, taking a blaster from a clone and firing at Sidious, causing him to ignite his red lightsaber and deflect the blaster bolts. As he reached the door, Yoda threw his saber which landed right in front of Palpatine, stopping him in his tracks. This gave the Jedi enough time to catch up and corner him. This was it. They had got him. Palpatine looks at them all, disgust and anger painted across his face. He uses the force to pull a second lightsaber from his sleeve and ignites it, preparing for battle. The five engage in a duel. Palpatine was completely outmatched by the council members, but he attempted to use the clones as a way to gain an advantage. Kenobi would momentarily separate himself from the duel to attack the clones, providing protection to his comrades. But Anakin, Windu and Yoda didn't need help, they were completely overwhelming Sidious. He attempted everything that he could, firing force lightning at Anakin whilst he leaped towards Yoda. But it was no use. Windu used his technique of the pod to disarm Palpatine before Anakin jams his lightsaber into the Sith Lord's chest, killing him. All around them, death continues as tens of thousands of clones continue to arrive at the building. It was overwhelming and hundreds of Jedi and Senators were losing their lives. They re-engaged in the conflict, but there was no end in sight. The clones were trained Jedi killers, using their numbers to kill any force-sensitive being they desired. There had to be a way to stop it. As Anakin slices down a Republic clone, he remembers that with Palpatine's death, Mas Amida becomes the Provisional Chancellor and thus has control over the contingency orders. Anakin and Obi-Wan fight their way through the conflict to find him. He was a coward, hiding in the center podium praying for his own survival. The two Jedi use the Senate pod to reach the Senator. They demand Mass Media to tell the clones to stop, but even in death he was loyal to Palpatine. He knew this was Sidious' vision and wanted to see it succeed, but his loyalty was short-lived when Anakin placed his sapphire blade to Amida's throat. He said if he doesn't tell the clones to stop, he will kill him. Kenobi knew this wasn't the Jedi way, but they didn't have time to argue. Fear was struck into the Provisional Chancellor as he used his comlink to stop both Order 66 and 47. Within moments, the clones dropped their blasters and the tyranny ended. But hundreds of senators and thousands of Jedi were killed. It was a massacre. Anakin would immediately rush to Padme's apartment to ensure that she was okay. During the conflict, she was the only thing on his mind. As he arrives in their apartment, she is safely on their couch, unaware of what has just happened as she is still on maternity leave. 
The aftermath of the conflict would have Dooku sentenced to 30 years in prison, a reduction from the multiple life sentences that he would have received if he didn't help out the Republic. Despite this, he was 83 years old and would still die in confinement. Bail Organa was elected as the new Supreme Chancellor, tasked with restoring peace back to the galaxy after the tyrannical reign of Chancellor Palpatine. This was a difficult task, but he had the help of the Jedi and other senators to achieve this. His first act in power was ordering the Kaminoans to remove every single chip inside the clones' heads, so they can't turn on the Republic again and can focus on being proud protectors of the galaxy. Padme would give birth to twins, and Anakin would become a happy father and husband. The Republic won the Clone Wars, and all was right in the galaxy. With peace restored to the galaxy, Anakin Skywalker and the Jedi focused on rebuilding their order so that they can prevent another galactic conflict from ever rising again. If you enjoyed today's video, you must watch what if Darth Vader upgraded his suit and what if the Jedi Council trained Anakin. Please consider becoming a member for $1 a month, it really helps us out. Thank you all for watching and may the force be with you.